Leo, ove godine si bio odličan u školi, pa sam ti odlučio kupiti poklon. Evo, možeš ga otvoriti. Hi, I would like to say a few words about my special guest. He gave very important contribution to the development of computers. Working for Commodore Business Machines as a principal engineer, he designed one of the first 8-bit computers. As my dad says, Bill designed one of his first computers and why is this so important? Now we live from dad's work who brings home the bacon for living from uh, IT business and all of that because of uh, computers from childhood. Bill's work has not been stopped. Now he gives great contribution to the community. More from my special guest Bill Hurd. Hi Bill, greetings Hi, from yeah. Croatia. Please, would you be so kind and introduce you and your work? Uh, well, I'm Bill Hurd. As you said, I worked for Commodore in the 1980s. Though, uh, I, I will say I, I designed what was probably the last of the 8-bit computers, not one of the first. There were certainly uh, some pioneers, that, that uh, really great people that did early work. Um, so I did one of the last ones with the Commodore 128. And then I also did a series of computers called the TED, which is also known as the Plus 4, and the 264, and the 364, and the C16. Uh, you probably have some of those uh, around there. And then uh, did some other things along the way. Okay. Uh, how did you get uh, interested in computer science, and what did you start with? Can you tell us about it, please? Um, well, I didn't start out in because we didn't have computers, so I actually uh, was very interested in electronics. I uh, used to repair TV sets. I got licensed to fix TVs at the age of something like 16 or 17, and I fixed uh, CB radios and car stereos and, and those kind of things, and then got a job in a company that made digital weighing instrumentation, that made digital scales, and they were based on the 6502 processor, and so that was kind of the angle that when Commodore was, was interviewing in, Phil, in the Philadelphia area, uh, I knew the 6502 processor really well. And so that's kind of how I got my start there, that how I got in the door, as we said. Uh, so Commodore 128 was a very popular computer, 8-bit computer for that time. And uh, could you tell us why was it so? Well. You know, there, there's people who say that it wasn't popular, um, and, and they, they compare it to the C64. And that's like having an older brother that, are, that you know, <laughs> was on the track team and also a fireman and also an astronaut. And, you know, they, they sold 27 million C64s. So uh, the 128, when we did it, um, we ended up selling not quite 6 million um, and it, it made like, you know, one and a half billion dollars in 1980. So, you know, there was money associated with it. 
But really what this E-128 was, was, um, you know, the fact that we had lost our management, Jack Tramiel, and the management left behind didn't know what to do, so the engineers stepped up and said, well, here's what we're going to make for CES this year. Here's what we're going to do as a product. So what made the C-128 what it was, was literally nobody told us what to do. We, we just did. And part of that was making a Commodore 64 compatible. So if there's any one redeeming quality to the 128, it's the fact you can run your C64 software on it while learning to use 80 column displays and even a Z80 and some of the other things we put in there. So it, 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 was, it was a rogue child. It was <laughs> a child without proper parents, as we say. Okay, uh, my dad told me how Commodore was very popular at uh, his time and hard to get one. So he had to go to one of the neighboring countries to buy Commodore. And what, is, what was your opinion about popularity of Commodore in that years? Well, again, the C64, it, you know, um, it made the home computer industry as far as I'm concerned, as far as people I know are concerned. Um, there are people like Apple will tell you that they started the home computer industry, but they didn't sell anything like 27 million, and they weren't affordable like the Commodore 64. So uh, to me, Commodore ruled. There was just no better home computer company at, at the time. <laughs> okay. Uh, and if I ask you to compare today's computers with those 8-bit computers, what would you say? Well, today's computers... You know, it's the same computer for the most part. I mean, there's Macs, and then there's PC compatible. And so, how do you, you an engineer can't really uh, create his own version of a computer. It has to be a PC or a Mac, or a few others, right? So, these days, um, you know, it's all about speed and, and those kind of things. And if somebody says, well, I design computers, people assume that you mean you're a programmer, right? Because who, who really does computer design these days? Um, you know, the motherboard's designed out, out, out in, the, in, in the East Asia or someplace, and that's it. So I'd say there's no chance to put your personality into a computer these days. I need to admit that one of my favorite web pages is Hackaday, where I find lots of projects I'm interested in. And I know that you uh, also, there uh, uh, lots of uh, contributions make there. And uh, could you tell us more about that page and uh, about it? Well, that's funny you say that. I just, uh, a new video came out two hours ago about um, logic. And what I want to do is I want to try and take somebody completely from the beginning logic um, uh, concept all the way through to field programmable gate arrays, the real complex logic. And so I want to take them through kind of the education that I got and I've never been to school, so I was self-taught. Um, up That got me into an engineering department, but then I learned from some really smart people and stuff they already knew. So a lot of the things I put on Hackaday are stuff that were told to me by smart people. So I see it as kind of a chance to maybe do a little teaching, you know, and, and, and maybe give somebody that, that passion for electronics I have. And uh, as you know, I attend mathematical and computer science gymnasium in Zagreb. And would you be so kind and tell a few words to me and my colleagues about how to success in our future work? Well, my first hire, I should tell you, uh, at Commodore, since I, I wasn't good in math and I had never taken a computer science class, my first hire was a young man named Dave Haney, who, who you may have heard out there. And, uh, so he, he was a dual degree from Carnegie Mellon. He had a math degree and a computer science degree. And so he was like gold. You know, he was mm -hmm. the, the ultimate engineer. So math and computers go together. Just because I'm bad at it doesn't mean <laughs> that you don't need it. You do. So, I, you know, the world, the world is in front of you right now. You can do anything you want. Um, and even now, it's, it's opening up with all the hobbyists and all, all the things you have access to technology we could only dream about 10 years ago. So you're in a great place to, to succeed as, and succeed at whatever you want. Hmm. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Bill, for all you've done and you'll do for the technology advancement. 
And do you have something more to add and to tell us, maybe? Um, well, it, it means that, you know, if somebody's looking for what to do or what floats their boat is, we say, you know, go for it. They don't, life is what happens while you're making plans. And if you don't like the job you're doing or something, find the thing that does make you happy and what, where your passion does lie. And for me, it was electronics. And for you, it's, it's whatever uh, you and your friends want it to be. Okay. Thank you, Bill, for this very interesting interview. I hope you'll do your best in your future work. And uh, good luck and all the best I wish to you. It's my pleasure and, and thank you, good luck, and uh, uh, I hope you find uh, what, what floats your boat also, where your passions lie. Uh, thank you.